I shouldn't say annual, annual, but our fourth Friday hosted by your Kingsport Chamber. Uh, we're pleased to have uh, everyone back from our last virtual event, which was a success, and we welcome any new participants that might be joining us today. Um, as you all know, we have to adapt to new ways of doing things, and uh, certainly this virtual fourth Friday gives us the opportunity to reach out to everyone uh, that's joining us, and your Kingsport Chamber has certainly adapted. We're all hoping and praying to get back to the new normal as soon as possible, and we thank you all for joining us this morning. This month's sponsor is Cigna. As a dedicated partner to our community, Cigna is committed to helping people improve their health, well-being, and peace of mind by making healthcare simple, affordable, and predictable. Cigna's values are core of their culture. Their values got out of 74,000 employees around the world work together, serve their customers, patients, clients, communities, and deliver on their mission. We appreciate their sponsorship this morning and certainly look forward to hearing from you later on in the program. At this time, I'd like to welcome Ramona Jackson, General Manager of Marriott, excuse me, MetaView Marriott Conference, Resort, and Convention Center. She's also your 2020 Kingsport Chamber Membership Chair. Ramona will provide us the invocation this morning. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you fill us with your spirit of love and unity across our community and nation. We ask that you help set aside our differences and look to the greater cause. We ask that you would help us to truly live a life of love. We pray for our families, for every relationship most dear to us, that you would guard our time and our lives together as we navigate through these times of uncertainty. We ask for a renewed heart of compassion, for love and faithfulness to be evident in every decision and action we take. Thank you for all that you do and to always give us great purpose and hope. May these times of uncertainty bring us closer together in spirit and cultivate a greater capacity for understanding. Through your mercy, may all be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Ramona. Now we would like to introduce our sponsor, Signum, a global health services company which serves more than 100 million customers. It's my pleasure to introduce Sharon Tanzel, the Director of Client and Customer Engagement for Signum. Thank you. you uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Sharon. Go right ahead. Oh, no. Um, as a leading health services company in the Mid-South, um, Signum is committed to the Tri-City market um, which we currently serve over 36,000 members. Cigna has partnered with Healthy Kingsport for several years to support their efforts to improve the health in the community. I would like to introduce our topic today, mental health recognition and response, which we all are well aware as an employer, behavioral health is even more critical today as we continue to navigate the pandemic and returning to work. Joining me from Cigna is Tom Heritage, who is a national Cigna SME in our behavioral and emotional health uh, area. And he's been with Cigna for over 17 years. He's a licensed clinician with a master's in counseling services. We appreciate, Tom, we appreciate Tom's work in the Mid-South with our clients and our sales team. Assisting with his expertise and insight today, is our behavioral health and client strategist. Also joining us today is Deb Williams, who has been in the Cigna market, specifically in East Tennessee for over 25 years, and has held several roles with Cigna in her tenure. She is currently a senior engagement consultant based in Knoxville, and has been in that role for over 15 years, where she has responsibility for the overall customer education customer engagement, wellness programs, and account strategy for the East Tennessee market. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Tom Heritage. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm so pleased to, to be here with you today and to talk to, about this very important topic. Um, you know, as we get started, I think we can all agree that, you know, during times of stress and uncertainty, um, you know, it's, it's 
critical that we are paying attention to our overall health, but particularly to our mental health and emotional well being. And so today we're going to spend a little bit of time uh, just talking about, you know, how, you know, what, should, what are some of the signs and symptoms we should be paying attention to? And then also, what can I do if I notice something is going on with myself or with somebody that I care about? Um, as it was mentioned in the intro, I've been with Cigna for over 17 years. Um, I've been in practice for uh, close to 30 years now. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the things that I've learned through the years is that stress is universal. We all deal with stress. We all um, have stress coming at us. And, uh, uh, and as we kind of start our conversation, I want us to think in terms of, you know, because it's a universal phenomenon, you know, many times we think in terms of uh, we're all in the same boat. You know, these things that are going on around us, we're all uh, going through them together. And um, recently I was reading from, it's from an unknown author uh, and they were talking about that statement. We're all in the same boat. And, and they were suggesting that maybe we need to rethink that um, and think in terms of um, we're all in the same storm, but we're all coming at this in our own boat. And uh, we all have our own unique history, our unique resources, um, other events that are going on in our life so that you know, we're, we're not all actually approaching that storm in the same way, in the same condition. Um, and so that kind of leads us to add maybe a, a measure of compassion as we're looking at other people struggling with maybe what we feel like is the same situation, understanding that they're not. Um, you know, uh, so let's, let's go to the next slide and we'll, we'll start talking about uh, stress in particular um, and when we talk about stress, like I said, it's, it's fairly universal. Um, it's not only a response to negative things going on in my life. Stress occurs in response to positive things. Uh, things like uh, a promotion at work or uh, a new home or a child being added to the family. All of these positive things add stress to our life as well. Uh, but of course, there's also situations like uh, social unrest, um, like the, the pandemic that we've all been dealing with. Um, an election year, you know, all of these things also um, uh, create stress in our lives, along with the many other events that are going on. Uh, and so as uh, we, as we talk about stress, uh, what we really want to call out and highlight today is that how I manage stress and how I manage the challenges in my life uh, plays a major role in my overall health and well-being. Um, and so um, coping well um, leads to um, better health, um, both physically and mentally. Um, but also, um, you know, being aware uh, of my own mental health, my own stress levels, um, and also those of the people around me, um, positions me to be a, a helper to, to those that are maybe struggling. Um, and we're going to talk about that a little bit today as well. You see there on the, on the right-hand side of the screen, uh, we've, we've uh, provided a definition of stress, and you'll see that it's both a psychological and physical um, response. Um, and at Cigna, you know, we are, um, you know, very committed to uh, the notion that, uh, that our health can't be broken out into different, air, different segments, that our total health includes both our physical, emotional, spiritual, financial, you know, all areas of, of health have to be addressed when we're talking about well-being. So, um, and again, stress particularly um, is that perception that what uh, I have available as resources is not sufficient to cope with life's demands or pressures. Um, and it can be intensified uh, with that when there's a feeling of having little support or control. And those are going to be some key issues that we talk about as we, as we go on today. So let's go to the next slide. Okay. So as we're talking about mental health, it's important to realize that mental health issues, emotional issues are prevalent. Um, so one in five of us in the workplace uh, will uh, experience a mental health issue um, in any given year. And, uh, you know, we call it, again, we're talking about that 
um, because each of us needs to be paying attention. Um, uh, and emotional issues and mental health issues, uh, not only do they affect us personally, but they also impact how we work, they impact um, our day-to-day -day life. And for me as a clinician, what's most important is that you know, mental, untreated mental health issues or mental health issues that are, uh, are, are not being adequately addressed impact the quality of life. And quality of life is, is really uh, the ultimate measure of uh, how effectively we're managing well-being. And then you see there on the right-hand side that 50% of people who are depressed go untreated. Um, you know, and that's talking specifically about depression because depression is the most prevalent mental health issue that we see in our society. Um, but, uh, but fully 50% are untreated. And if you think about that, the impact of untreated health issues um, is very significant. And, and why do we think that people don't get treated um, and there are obviously there are several components to that. Um, some people don't know that they have a, a, a mental health concern. Um, other people have a lack of resources. Um, but one of the major drivers is uh, in our society is stigma. Uh, and so we need to talk about stigma and, and understand what it is and how it's impacting people seeking treatment. So let's go to the next slide. So here we see stigma can be broken out into two areas. So there's public stigma, uh, and that's what the general population feels or accepts or believes uh, about uh, a particular uh, situation or condition. Um, and of course, uh, then there's personal stigma, what an individual believes um, about those stereotypes or about um, what would be the consequences of, of acknowledging that they have a mental health issue. Uh, and you can see there, as, as you look at the, the bullet points there on the slide, uh, the impact again, you know, many times it leads to avoidance. Um, uh, those, uh, you know, when, when mental health uh, is stigmatized, uh, we want to avoid being labeled. Um, and so it may lead to uh, not filling my prescriptions. Um, it may be trying to avoid labels. It can, um, again, lead to not seeking care at all. Um, and again, when you think about uh, public stigma, um, all you have to do is look at our media and our, and our satires, um, you know, how mental health is characterized or caricatured even in uh, the media and, and our entertainment world. Um, and so again, we have to pay attention to stigma um, and we have to battle stigma, you know, and say, well, how can, how can I battle stigma? Um, well, Many times that begins with just being willing to have a conversation, uh, being willing myself to acknowledge if I have a need um, and to be responsive to that. So let's go to the next slide. Okay. So we're gonna give you a little quiz here, kind of get, you, get your brain going uh, early this morning. We, we sh I showed you a slide earlier that said for depression in particular, 50% go untreated. Uh, this question is asking, what um, is the percentage of US adults uh, with a mental health condition who receive treatment in a given year. And um, so I just want you to think about that, think, think about your answer. Um, and uh, in just a moment, I'm gonna say, let's, let's go to the next slide and let's see what the answer is. 41%, so only 41% of people who have a mental health condition actually receive treatment. Um, and so again, you know, this is highlighting that, you know, we have these very prevalent conditions. Um, we have the impact of stigma and other uh, um, factors that are, that are uh, preventing people from seeking treatment. And that means that we have a large portion of our population. There's many of us that are dealing with mental health issues um, without the benefit of treatment. Um, and so because of that, it's important for us uh, to... Uh, be aware, um, not only for ourselves, but for the people around us. We're going to spend a little bit of time, we're going to kind of transition and talk about what can I do? How can I position myself um, to recognize and respond uh, when uh, either myself or somebody that I care about or somebody that is in my close proximity um, may be struggling emotionally? So let's go to the next slide.
so as we talk we talk about you know how can i help um, how can i make a difference we're going to talk about three r's uh, recognize reach out and resources and uh, when we're talking about recognize obviously that is how, how do i know what the signs of an emotional distress look like um, when i talk about reaching out how do i connect to a person um, and resources when i do and if 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 that person is actually struggling um, what are the things in, in that are available to help um, and i should call you know i should mention that uh, uh, actually there should be a fourth r here you know the, an overarching r uh, that uh, is really in play here is relationship and it's really in the context of our relationships um, that we um, are able to recognize and reach out and provide resources and so uh, again the, the importance of connection uh, paying attention all of those things are, are significant so let's go to the next slide so we're going to talk about recognize what am i recognizing um, so somebody who's experiencing an emotional distress um, some of the things we'd want to pay attention to you know noticeable changes in behavior or mood um, difficulty in concentration um, being up emotionally upset you know either excessive worry fear sadness um, being withdrawn, withdrawn, somebody being socially withdrawn has been, is maybe a challenging thing to monitor these days. Um, you know, as we are more isolated, as we are working more remotely, um, uh, staying uh, away from our normal social interactions, um, it really requires that, that those of us that are working together and, and, uh, and also as we're interacting with our peers and our friends and family, uh, that we purposefully make those connections and those connections are significant um, feeling tired or inability to, to handle stress or carry out my, my daily activities so these are some of the things that we would be paying attention to um, that would maybe raise a question now let's go to the next slide here's some, some more examples of, of things to pay attention to maybe more particularly around somebody who's having a mental health issue and we start off with unexplained physical symptoms. So again, that mind-body connection comes up that it's for so many people that are dealing with a stress event or a mental illness, the very first sign or symptom that comes up is actually a physical symptoms. And they don't understand, they, they think that they're, maybe they're uh, having a physical illness or a physical response to something uh, when in fact it is an emotional issue. Uh, so you'll see um, uh, kind of, uh, some different domains here. So we, we've called out the physical, uh, the cognitive, confused thinking. Um, and then we have uh, several areas of emotion. So strong feelings of anger, extremes, highs and lows, worry, uh, sadness. Um, and then we have some behavioral cues as well. Uh, substance use, um, increase uh, particularly in, in substance use. Um, uh, as well as social withdrawal, which we talked about earlier. So all of these things are things that we would be paying attention to. And if we start seeing these things, uh, again, maybe this would spur us on to have uh, engaged a person in a conversation or we ask some questions. Um, so let's go to the next slide. So reaching out, that's what we're talking about is, you know, if I notice something uh, now, how do I engage with this person? Um, and for, for many of us, that's a very uncomfortable situation. Now, I have to first kind of overcome my fear of uh, maybe I'm not the right person, or maybe I don't feel equipped. Um, and so, again, that's part of what we're doing today is just by having this conversation, hopefully you'll come away with it saying, you know, maybe I feel a little better about my, uh, my capacity, my uh, feeling equipped to be a uh, help in times like this. So, so reaching out, just finding words to open up a conversation. Um, you know, expressing your concern and, su and support. Uh, so again, you know, you don't have to be able to say, you know, I know what's going on with you. Um, it can just simply be asking a question uh, or expressing that, that concern. You know, I, uh, I've noticed something and I, I'm, uh, I'm concerned for you. Can you tell me what's going on, uh, for example? So listening. Let them take the lead. Like I said, 
you know, just, uh, just having that open-ended question and then you being able to step back and just hear um, uh, what are they saying to you and always treating them with uh, dignity and respect. Um, reassuring that you care, uh, you know, again, that's, that's, that's such a simple task and but many times it's very, very meaningful. Um, you know, and, and again, that goes along with avoiding judgment. You know, we don't want to, to add in our own judgment or our, our own stigma, uh, stigmatizing statements uh, and using I statements, you know, uh, owning you know, your observations saying, you know, I, I, I just noticed or I am concerned, you know, that's, that's uh, enough uh, to start that conversation. So um, let's go to the next slide. So if, as I reach out, you know, what if I find out, well, this person's actually in a crisis and what would, uh, what would indicate that somebody's in a crisis? So, so maybe they're saying, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, I am, I'm struggling and I'm, I'm actually uh, maybe having thoughts of harming myself or others, um, or their thought processes are so disruptive that, that maybe you don't feel comfortable that they're safe to themselves or able to care for themselves. Um, so what do I do then? You know, and many times this is exactly why people don't reach out. It's like, oh, wow, well, you know, if I reach out and I find myself, find them in a crisis, uh, first of all, do I have the time to deal with that? Uh, do, I, do I know what to do? Um, and am I going to be put in a situation where I have to have a solution? Um, and the answer to, to that is, is really you don't have to be the solution. Um, simply having some basic information uh, to help steer somebody, to help just the knowledge that there is help available uh, and how to access that um, is, is enough uh, to, um, to be a helper at this time. So, uh, so we have this little acronym, you know, so if somebody's in crisis, um, SOS, so stay with them, um, obtain help, uh, and safety first, and always safety first. And, and we always talk about your safety first and foremost. So if you're in a situation where somebody is violent or, or that you, they're out of control, um, you obviously don't have to put yourself in harm's way in order to help uh, another person. Um, again, uh, many times that's where we, it necessitates a call to 911. Let's get some, somebody here who can help manage this. Um, but also we've, we've listed this National Suicide Prevention uh, Lifeline, uh, 1-800-273-TALK or 8255. And there's also the text number there underneath. Um, and this is a great resource. This national hotline is available 24 seven. And, uh, and if you're the helper or if you're somebody who needs help, um, you can call and get some guidance uh, from, from the folks here at the National uh, Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Uh, so let's go to the next, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so we've talked about, um, you know, the, the first two R's and the third R is resources. So knowing who can help. Uh, so here's a list of some, some potential helpers. Uh, so uh, primary care physicians, what a great resource. So if somebody's, um, you notice that they're struggling, being able to just say, hey, have you talked to your doctor about that? Uh, uh, licensed mental health clinicians, you know, uh, folks like myself, therapists, clinical social workers, psychologists, psychiatrists. Um, it's helpful to understand the difference between those individuals and what kind of care they provide. Um, you know, mental health uh, uh, you know, therapists, cl uh, clinical social workers, um, primarily talk therapy, uh, psychologists, some testing, psychiatrists are doctors. Uh, so they uh, uh, are going to be able to prescribe medications in, in most cases if that's needed. And then the certified peer specialists. There are, there are people who have... Uh, lived experience plus additional training uh, that are available to assist as well. Uh, you see local community support. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna apologize. I, I did not delete the C handout. Uh, I used this slide in a different uh, setting and, and actually provide a handout. So there's not a handout today um, with uh, local community supports. Um, but uh, being aware of what, you know, what, what is available in my community. Um, and then again, just always being willing to encourage professional help if, if they um, are continuing to have symptoms. So many times when I reach out to somebody and say, hey, I notice, uh, they may be saying, you know, I really don't think this is a big deal. I don't think I need help. But, um, you know, it's important not to forget, you know, if you've noticed and, and uh, you felt compelled to reach out, uh, 
some, sometime in the future, uh, they may come back to you and say, you know what, uh, I appreciate that you reached out. Um, I think I might need help. So uh, continuing to be available and encouraging is important. So let's go to the next slide. Okay. So if we're paying attention to both others and ourselves, I just wanted to add some, uh, some tips here. So what are some ways to strengthen mental health? Um, and again, I think this is a really, you know, a, a really relevant slide for us today uh, because we're all, all obviously dealing with stress. We're all needing to pay attention to our well-being. So first and foremost, connecting with others. You know, having those people in our lives that are significant, it's important to be able to, to connect and understand the importance of that connection. Staying positive, uh, physical activity, um, uh, Volunteering to help others, um, you know, it, it's it's amazing how impactful being uh, engaged in other people's lives has on our own well-being. Um, uh, having strategies and solutions to help uh, cope with hard times. So we're talking about resiliency there. You know, what are those tools in my toolkit that that I keep sharp so that um, when uh, difficult situations come up, uh, I can apply those and, and be successful. Uh, great joy and satisfaction, eating well, uh, getting enough sleep, uh, being in touch with your spirituality, um, and then again, of course, uh, getting professional help if you need it. Um, and uh, I just want to say, when it, you know, getting professional help if you need it, you don't have to wait for things to be a crisis or things to be. Uh, extremely difficult or out of control before you seek professional help. Anytime you feel like, you know, maybe I, I, I would benefit or maybe uh, things just aren't going, uh, aren't responding. My, my attempts aren't responding as well um, is a great time to reach out for, for help. So let's go to the next slide. Another resource to be just aware of is what are the, what are the resources I have available in my health benefits? So again, for, for um, you know, not only Cigna clients, but for anybody who, who might have access to uh, medical benefits, uh, understanding what are the behavioral resources and emotional resources available. Um, uh, we've listed life assistance programs, but we could, we could add employee assistance programs um, or member assistance programs uh, that have preventative behavioral uh, and work-life support um, resources built into those. Um, you know, being willing to promote uh, those mental health resources as well, um, and just understanding how to access them. Um, so many times, just just knowing that uh, th that number on my medical card uh, when I have a medical concern can also connect me to people that are are willing to help uh, support my emotional well-being as well. Um, and that's a, a great place to start because uh, you know many times we just don't know where to go. You know, how do how do I how do I access these things? Um, and uh, and my uh, my medical plan many times is a great resource to start steering towards those available resources. Um, and then again, specialty programs, you know, if, if those are built in, uh, keeping uh, people aware and educated around those is, is significant as well. So kind of a, a, in wrapping this all together, you know, we've talked about, you know, how mental health issues are prevalent, they're universal, we are all attending to our emotional well-being every day how well we do that significantly impacts our, our physical health as well as our emotional health. Um, and then also being aware, uh, being available uh, to those around me. Um, I, can, I can fight stigma by just simply being willing to have the conversation and to reach out. Um, and I don't have to be the ultimate solution uh, in, in order to, to be a help. Um, I can just simply notice and steer people uh, and remind them of the resources that are available around them. So, uh, so that's 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 really where um, uh, I wanted to go today. Um, is there anybody that wanted to add any comments or anything additionally before we uh, go to questions and answers? Yes, uh, this is Deb, and I did want to mention when you talk about stigma and reaching out at the same time, um, reaching out to somebody who you think may be having some issues. Think of it in terms of if somebody had a, a serious cough for a couple of days, forget our current environment, um, you would probably not hesitate to say, gee, do you think you should see your doctor? That doesn't sound good. 
I mean, we do that all the time. And maybe saying to someone, you know, get carefully worded that you don't seem okay lately. Um, is there anything I can help you with? You would do the same thing with the cough that you should maybe do with mental health as well. And it also can help relieve that stigma that you're acknowledging it and talking to them. But of course you wanna maintain their privacy because there's still, it's still a very private issue for many folks. And, and Tom, um, also, you know, you made a good point around resources. Um, you know, definitely everyone should check in with their um, insurance provider because, you know, mental health and behavioral health issues have become so prevalent that, um, you know, lots of resources are being, being put in place, you know, virtual access. So access to your behavioral providers virtually, um, you don't necessarily just have to walk into an office these days. You can, you can have that same visit virtually. A lot of carriers are also putting in, you know, tech technology that can address a lot of these things. I know at Cigna, um, we offer, you know, apps and um, resources like we have a um, I Prevail um, application that really focuses on things like, um, you know, stress and depression. It offers a very tailored resource um, through technology for individuals to, to utilize. And we also have a, an app called Happify that gives individual ac access to, you know, to activities and games that focus on, on stress and, and things of that nature. So again, there's lots of resources out there. Um, you just have to, to um, mm -hmm. you know, maybe make a phone call or go online um, to check those out. Great, thanks, Sharon. Those are really great call outs. Well, thank you, Tom, uh, Deb, and Sharon. I believe, uh, I'm not sure if we wanted to address a, there was a question, uh, Stephanie. I uh, didn't know if at this time you wanted to address that or if you wanted to look at it later. No, we can address it now. Um, we had a question that says, since most of us are not trained in the area of mental health and specifically depression, how do we know someone is serious about it? For example, it's not uncommon for someone to say, I'm depressed, but how do we know it if it to take it serious enough to take action? You know, that, that's a great question. And uh, I, I really do appreciate that question because it, it calls out a couple of things. First of all, again, we mentioned that uh, in our, in our everyday language, sometimes we're contributing to stigma because we label things um, that are not really mental health issues as mental health issues. Um, so depression is a great one, you know, oh, I, I, oh now I'm depressed, you know, or uh, where, where maybe I'm disappointed or maybe I'm uh, just not, not uh, having the best day. Um, but how do I know uh, if somebody is, is really needing help um, and again, this, this, this goes back to that relationship piece that you really, you can trust your gut. Um, and, and I know that's a highly clinical term, uh, but, but really that's what it comes down to is uh, when, when I notice that somebody is struggling, that it's not, not just um, a fleeting uh, mood or a, a circumstance, um, but they're really, you know, uh, it's, it's impacting their life in, in different areas. Um, maybe they're not uh, just, just really not themselves. It's perfectly okay uh, at that point to just reach out and say, hey, you know, I'm just checking in um, or I've observed again, you know, using those I statements. Um, you know, um, you know there, there's really no risk in that because if somebody isn't really seriously uh, uh, struggling, um, then it communicates that you care and that you're connecting with them uh, and they can clear that up for you. But if, if they are, uh, many times uh, they are f not only battling with the, f the, the depression that they're feeling, they may be feeling alone with it or feeling like um, that nobody cares um, and you reaching out again can, can combat those feelings as well. So um, again, if, if uh, 
I, I would say don't be overly concerned if you if you uh, aren't certain uh, and you can't and don't wait until you're certain because many times that's when it's too late and uh, that that again that expression of concern uh, can be a tremendous help. You know, Tom, if I may, um, one of the things too that we need to be, and in this presentation certainly was chock full of things that we need to pay attention to, but I, I think we need to make sure that we don't put people on their heels by saying, what do you have to be depressed about? Or why don't you just snap out of it? I mean, putting somebody on their heels is just would make the matters completely worse. Correct, yeah, that's, that's really good. You know, I don't think I don't think there's any any one of us that doesn't have, uh, especially by the statistics, if we don't have somebody within our life, whether it actually be work related, personal, or that sort of thing, that has uh, struggling with these types of things. So, I've uh, I've learned a lot from uh, your all's presentation today, and I know the I think I speak for the rest of us that we really we really appreciate it this morning. So. With that, I would like to uh, welcome Ramona Jackson back to the stage and talk about an update on MetaView. Ramona? Sorry about that, lots of clicks. So um, good morning, everyone. Um, I wanna let you know that uh, MetaView has remained open um, through these unprecedented times and we have prepared not only our team through training, but our facility to meet all the guidelines um, to include guest rooms, meeting space, public areas, um, guidelines through CDC, local and state partners, Marriott International, and we proudly display the Tennessee Pledge throughout the hotel. We are very fortunate to have great meeting space that allows for social distancing, as we all know is very important to remain safe. We have successfully hosted several events to include the MMA Showcase Cage Fight. We have hosted several rehearsal dinners, weddings. This weekend, we have a wedding, um, Indian wedding um, and celebration. Uh, golf remains strong. We've hosted golf groups and a special thank you and shout out to visit Kingsport um, to ensure that youth sports are now open and um, weekends will, will be strong. I just wanted to let you know that while our facility and team has been impacted by COVID-19, our commitment and our passion to take great care of our guests and associates remain our top priority. We evaluate daily the possibility of opening outlets to include the MetaView restaurant, the Horse Creek Lounge, and other areas of the hotel. Today, we will be opening the pool, as I know our youth sports um, guests are looking forward to that of course by meeting all of the guidelines that are in place to ensure safety. Our Starbucks is open seven days a week. We have a slightly reduced schedule, but we invite you over for a cup of co coffee. It will be a journey to improve to the level of business that we've enjoyed in the past, but know that we are prepared and we are ready to welcome you back to MetaView. And I would be remiss if I did not take this opportunity to recognize and brag on this team that's here at MetaView. They are truly brilliant hosts. Everyone has been so open to being cross-utilized throughout the hotel as we take care of our guests. Nothing too big, too small for this team. They'll clean rooms. They'll set up meeting space. They'll serve food. It doesn't matter, just ask and they are ready to serve. So if you should see any of my fabulous team out in the community, I hope that you can say thank you to them. But we are here, come back, we're happy to host your meeting and we can do that in a very safe environment. Thank you, Ramona. 
Uh, now we would like to invite to speak our city mayor, Pat Scholl, with the city update. Pat? Hello, everybody. Um, it's an honor to follow Ramona. She's one of my heroes. Uh, in fact, this past Saturday, uh, they conducted a mixed martial arts bout there at uh, Metaview. And uh, I, I was thinking about asking Ramona if she could keep the cage up so they could have a county commission grudge match or something like that. Or maybe leave it up for the state legislature, but you know, we'll, we'll see. But uh, the city government has been uh, affected like uh, other organizations in regards to the coronavirus. Uh, but um, we do have some highlights here that show that uh, well, how we've adjusted to it. Uh, we passed the budget last week and the tax rate. And the, the highlights are uh, no increase in taxes, no new taxes, no increase in either water or sewer rates to, to uh, uh, city customers. We're not gonna take on any new debt next year. Uh, we cut spending for the year that we're finishing up on the 30th of June, and uh, uh, our spending uh, projections for next year are much less than we, uh, than we might ordinarily uh, uh, have spent. Uh, so it was a very conservative budget, but it's in reaction to uh, all these unknowns about the economy. Um, for example, uh, you, you know, there's always a lag time when we get our report on sales tax collection, and sales tax for April was 6% lower than it was for April 2019. So uh, this is something we're just going to have to stay on top on. Uh, top on. Um, uh, uh, other things going on, uh, the governor let uh, public bodies like the Board of Mayor and Aldermen conduct our meetings uh, virtually or electronically. And for uh, several weeks, we didn't actually have any citizens right and physically in front of us as we were conducting the meeting. Now, the meetings are always shared on uh, Charter Cable Channel 192, and, and they're also live streamed on the city's uh, webpage. Uh, but uh, the last uh, series of meetings, uh, uh, the, uh, when we passed the budget and so forth, we did have a few citizens in front of us. And we're gonna, we're gonna go back to the old way of doing business, but with some modifications, which simply uh, means some restrictions on the total number of people so we can ensure social distancing and so forth. Uh, but uh, I, you know, I prefer to do it right there in front of people and have people do, uh, 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 provide comments and so forth to us. So our next work session is the 6th of July and the next uh, business meeting is the 7th of July. Uh, I look forward to uh, seeing a bunch of you out tomorrow at the Miracle Field and the playground opening. Uh, what a, a great uh, gift that our, uh, all our citizens and corporations that donated are giving to those less fortunate than, than most of us. And um, I, because of the restrictions of actually interacting with people, you know, the examples we're doing this by Zoom instead of in person, uh, I, you know, I found it, I felt kind of constrained where I wanted to be out meeting people and seeing things and all that. And uh, so uh, I'm still open to meeting small groups or individuals. And of course, I get a lot of emails. I get a lot of phone calls all, uh, every week. Uh, but one, one step I took was I started uh, emailing uh, a bunch of our pastors because pastors have congregations and the congregations have continued to either meet online or they meet, uh, you know, in, in, in a person, but with certain, again, restrictions. And uh, the pastors kind of helped me pass the word about what's going on in Kingsport. And uh, uh, people have come up to me and asked me to add them to the email list. So I addressed it to the pastors, but I, I sent it to lots of people and it's just updates on uh, what the city's doing and things going on around us. Uh, you know, the state has seen a, 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 an uptick in uh, COVID-19, but in Sullivan County, we're in tremendous shape. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, Ballad uh, has, um, uh, headed here, 
They, there's only seven confirmed cases in Sullivan County, uh, in Ballot, or in, uh, in the whole county. And uh, Ballot has tremendous capability left to surge if we got more cases. Uh, we're just in much better shape than the, than the rest of the state. Uh, that doesn't mean we don't need to stay vigilant. We do need to stay vigilant. And that's about all I got. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Mayor. We appreciate, uh, certainly appreciate that update. Uh, now we turn to Andrew Wilcox, the Executive Director of Cosby, and David McClaskey, President and Founder of McClaskey Excellence Institute. Say that three times fast. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Good morning, Kingsport Chamber members. Uh, it's a great day. I wanted to just make sure that all of our small business owners are aware of a new program that we have kicked off this week, actually. And uh, this is called our COVID-19 uh, CARES Act uh, program. We're referring to it as our Enriched Technical Assistance Program. So if you're calling the chamber and asking about that program, uh, refer to it as the Enriched Technical Assistance Program. And what that is, it's a program that is funded by the SBA through the CARES funding. Uh, we have the ability uh, to work with private consultants and independent contractors to extend our services. And so we're working, we have contracts with several service providers uh, that small businesses can utilize. And this is for businesses that have been directly impacted by COVID-19. So the service providers are providing the service uh, to the business at no cost to the business owner. The service provider is still getting paid and I want everybody to know that that provider is getting paid, so there's no guilt uh, when they are seeking uh, the service uh, with one of our independent contractors. Very quickly, uh, the contractors that we have a partnership with for this program are Aero Creative, uh, which is a marketing company, Kathy Richards, which is a CPA, Seek Space Entrepreneur Center, Beyond Engagement provides social media help, uh, McClaskey Excellence Institute, and David's here today. He's going to talk a little bit about what they can do for small businesses. Kaplan CFO Solutions, uh, Hill House Creative, which is another marketing company. And by the way, Kaplan CFO Solutions is a uh, financial analysis uh, uh, accounting uh, type of uh, firm. Uh, Hannah Speaks is an accountant, and Wilson Worley PC, which is an attorney group. So you notice there are several uh, contractors that can help small businesses with questions that are going to arise uh, regarding the PPP forgiveness uh, application. And so we have these providers on board to help answer questions and, and get uh, these loans forgiven for our small businesses. So if you're seeking these services, uh, please reach out to us, go to our website at www.cosby.org there is a tab on the website, a COVID-19 tab. If you click on the tab, you can preview the services that these providers can uh, assist you with. And right now, I'm just going to ask David McClaskey, who's with us today, to just, David, if you could just please let businesses know what type of help your company uh, can, can provide for them. David? Oh, great. Thank you, Landra. Uh, basically, Operations Excellence. It's a pleasure to be a group, uh, part of a group of 10 uh, different consultings providing 10 different types of services. And our part is Operations Excellence, which is basically getting your products and services to your brand standard every time, which as we know from anybody that's familiar with PALS and others, getting that is one of the best marketing strategies you could possibly have and one of the great ways to restore your business. Let's deliver your products and services to your brand standards every time. And one thing I'd like you to help us out with is we're gonna do three, we're gonna do one-on-one -on -one consulting, which will be limited and, and coming back through Cosby. Um, but we're gonna do three webinars that'll be open to just about everybody. And July 22nd, 11 to 12, and you can find the links uh, either in the late, latest chamber newsletter or Cosby. Um, uh, if you could get the word out to get people there so we can get as many small businesses as possible to help improve their, their current products and services to their brand standards so they can get as much repeat business as possible. So if you all have wonderful networks, if you could get the word out, July 22nd, 11 to 12 webinar, 
we'll come to your living room and give you some fantastic advice. And it'll be part of a program to first identify the best opportunity. The next webinar, which will be in August, will then get you a plan to do it. And the third webinar in August will then give you tools to, to improve your process. So it's a pleasure to be part of such an outstanding program that Cosby and Andrea have created. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thanks for being part of it. And thanks for supporting our businesses. Uh, again, if you're interested in accessing these services, just go to our website at www.cosby.org. And the objective here with this program, there's been a lot of focus on financial assistance for small businesses as a result of, of the COVID. And so now that most of those concerns, at least businesses have applied for funding and, and most have received some type of funding, it's very important right now to focus on getting the business strong uh, as we reopen our economy. We want our businesses to remain open uh, and we are providing uh, tools and resources to keep you in business. Uh, so if you're having any struggle uh, with down sales or loss of employees or you've had to close, this is a program for you. Thanks for letting me uh, discuss this on the fourth Friday webinar. Uh, everybody be amazing, be great, and have a wonderful weekend. Thanks, Andrea and David. Uh, we're now turning to Jeff Fleming, Relocation Manager with Move to Kingsport. Jeff? Thank you, Jeff. So my charge is to give you a two minute update on what's happening with Move to Kingsport. And so buckle up for a, a rough ride here. Uh, I'm happy to report that Move to Kingsport is still moving forward and in interest in our amenities. Our lifestyle and our quality of life is still very high. Uh, just as a reminder, we track uh, the Kingsport Water Service Area, which serves more than 100,000 residents in the city of Kingsport and some of the unincorporated areas of Western Sullivan County eastern Hawkins County, northwestern Washington County, and northeastern Greene County. We focus on those who move from greater than 35 miles because we're, interest, we're not interested in reshuffling uh, the same deck within the Tri-Cities at Metro. We're interested in who's moving to the region from greater than 35 miles away. So currently we have six weeks of data for the pandemic period from March 15th through May 29th with an additional month of data coming next week. So for the first six weeks of the pandemic period, we had 124 families from 27 states that moved here from greater than 35 miles away. 81% um, moved to the city, inside the city limits. 19% moved elsewhere in the Kingsport Water Service area. Uh, the top states, uh, in addition to Tennessee and Virginia, are Florida, North Carolina, uh, Kentucky, South Carolina, New York, Pennsylvania, Texas, Illinois, and Indiana. So drilling down in Tennessee, 63% uh, are from Knoxville East, with the closest being Morristown, so outside that 35 mile area. 26% are from Middle Tennessee, 8% from East Tennessee beyond Knoxville, and 3% from West Tennessee. In Virginia, 50% are from Southwest Virginia, again, beyond 35 miles from Kingsport. Uh, I believe the closest place is Marion. 21% uh, are from the I-81 corridor in Western Virginia, starting at Virginia Tech and going north. And then 14% are from Northern Virginia and 14% from the Tidewater. And then in Florida, 31% are from Central Florida, 31% from Tampa Bay, 14% from Southeast Florida, which includes Miami and Fort Lauderdale, and 14% from Southwest Florida, which is Fort Myers and Naples, and then 8% from Northeast Florida, which spans from Jacksonville to Gainesville to Daytona. Between those three states, that represents about 50% of that 124 families I mentioned earlier. Uh, we maintain an ongoing database of a little over 5,000 prospects who are active, uh, who've expressed an interest in re relocating to Tennessee. Each time we reach out to them, by far the most clicks are the links that direct them to houses for sale on realtor.com. The number one most clicked is for the $275,000 to $450,000 homes. Uh, number two is homes less than 10 years old. And number three is all homes of any age that are $475,000 and up. Our biggest challenge is our limited inventory. So if you're a builder or a developer, there's opportunity in Kingsport. If your business would like to advertise on the movetokingsport.com website, we now have several options available. You can contact Chelsea Ketron at the Chamber for more information. And then finally, the latest edition of Livability Magazine is, uh, is now out. Uh, it's available online and we will be receiving uh, hard copies soon. If you would like some of those, 
to distribute to your prospective employees or visitors to your business. Uh, they are available for you to pick up and, and take to your office um, down at the chamber. So thank you very much and I encourage all your friends to move to Kingsport. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Nicole Austin, Membership Engagement Director with your Kingsport Chamber will now share our new members and upcoming events. Nicole. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, REMAX Cavaliers Kingsport is a new member. They represent buyers and sellers throughout the state of Tennessee and Virginia, and they specialize in residential, commercial, agricultural, and now rental properties. Ariel Presley is heading up their brand new Kingsport office, so welcome REMAX Cavaliers. A um, couple announcements for you. We have two upcoming webinars with McClaskey's Excellence Institute. The first will be on July the 22nd at 11 a.m., and that one is titled Identifying Your Best Opportunity. We hope that you'll sign up and join us for that event. You can go to kingsportchamber.org for more information. And also Thursday, August the 6th at 11 a.m., we have Turning Improvement Opportunities into a Plan for Success, and this is also with McClaskey's Excellence Institute. Uh, we also have the FunFest t-shirt. This year it's called the UnFest t-shirt and those orders wrap up on this Sunday. So you need to make sure you go ahead and get your UnFest t-shirt. Those um, are at, at the Action Athletics and you can go to funfest.net for more information or kingsportchamber.org. Healthy Kingsport has added another step challenge. It began on June 1st, but there's still time to get your steps in. That will continue through August the 1st. So download the Walker Tracker app and get to step in today. The challenge is called Mind Over Miles. If you haven't completed the 2020 census, you still have time. There's several upcoming census events. You can complete that online, or you can go on June the 29th to Girls Incorporated in Kingsport from five to seven. They'll help you fill out those questionnaire and if you have any questions on that it's very easy and it only takes a couple minutes couple minutes so go to 2020census.gov also the region ahead um, local business recovery grants they are still accepting applications for small businesses that have been impacted by COVID-19 so go to regionahead.com for more information and to apply for those grants and finally our 4th of July celebration uh, we'll have two firework displays this year. There's going to be a downtown Kingsport location and also a location on East Monroe. It's going to begin at 945 on July the 4th. Um, the health department recommends that you remain in your vehicles to watch the fireworks. If you need to get out of your vehicle, just make sure to social distance and wear your mask and make sure you turn into 98.5 WTFM for patriotic music while you enjoy the fireworks display. That's it for me. Have a great morning. Thanks, Nicole. Stephanie Hernandez, Membership Event Director with your Kingsport Chamber, will now give some closing remarks. Stephanie? Thank you, Jeff. Um, with the reopening of businesses, please remember to use caution, keeping six feet apart and wearing your facial mask. Your Kingsport Chamber has reopened with strict guidelines for employees to follow for everyone's safety. Your Kingsport Chamber is very committed to helping get our community back to normal the safest way possible. Now, if you have any questions about best practices during this time, please visit um, our website, kingsportchamber.org for guidance. You can also visit our website and Facebook page for daily updated information. Your Kingsport Chamber is here to help you, our business community, to rebuild and become stronger than ever before. We would like to thank Cigna for sponsoring our virtual fourth Friday today. I think it was a wonderful presentation and it was very needed. So thank you guys so very much and everyone please stay safe and have a wonderful weekend.
Thanks, guys.